Hello golfers, this is Tim Mitchell here, Golf Digest best teacher in your state and certified instructor at the beautiful Pelican Hill Golf Club on the Newport coast of California. And I'm here today to basically try and help you all understand the importance of creating more rotational forces in your golf swing. And uh, I'm using a wonderful world-class model here, former number one player in the world, Justin Rose. And you'll see that I've got a line on Justin's hiney, as well as a box around his head. And we're going to try and utilize both of those uh, drawing uh, tools there, just to help us communicate uh, some things that Justin does exceptionally well in his golf swing. So before we dive into that, however, I want you guys to kind of put your little imaginary hat on here and think about a discus throw from the Olympics. And as that discus thrower is spinning around and getting ready to hurl that disc as far as he possibly can down uh, into the field in front of him, his arm gets as far away as it possibly can from his body. If his body got closer to this discus or his arm became shortened, he is uh, decreasing his ability to create speed out towards the disc. And that's kind of to a large degree why I have that line behind Justin's hiney here right now, is that we want you to see just how well he utilizes those rotational forces by actually getting his behind farther away from the golf ball uh, throughout the dynamic sequence of his golf swing. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look at that here right now. I'm going to go ahead and start to swing the golf club back. And Justin makes an extremely cool and dynamic move right during the transition of his golf swing with his butt right there. Can you see how his hiney gets farther away uh, from the golf ball? Okay, and actually starts to crease or crack into or crash into that line that was initially behind him. So he is getting farther away from the golf ball, which in turn is going to allow him to create more speed with the object in his hands, the golf club itself, to be able to eventually compress into the golf ball, okay? So uh, this is something that uh, a few world-class players do, and, and especially golfers that try and create uh, as much speed rotationally, or at least trying to maximize the speed that they create rotationally with their body motion. And that's one of the things that he does extremely well, okay? So um, why do I want to encourage you guys to do that? Obviously, number one, to create more speed. But number two, uh, why don't we take a little bit of a closer look at uh, two other things that Justin does to try and help him enhance his ability to increase those rotational forces in his golf swing. And number one is going to be how he sets up to the golf ball. Can you see how tight Justin's arms are to his body? His hands are kind of hanging directly underneath his shoulders. In my mind, if Justin was kind of lifting a heavy dumbbell, this is exactly uh, the position that he would actually probably be holding that dumbbell from. His arms wouldn't be out too far. They wouldn't be obviously resting on top of his uh, hips right here. They'd be directly underneath him like he currently is here right now. Now, the neat part about this is that this has certainly put Justin in a position to be a good athlete, but it's also you know, kind of encouraged his body to recognize, boy, if my arms are this close and underneath me, my body better get out of the way at some point dynamically throughout the golf swing motion. I like this. This is something that uh, I think a lot of golfers can benefit from is that they stand too far away from the golf ball. Uh, their arms are disconnected to their torso and their arms are not hanging properly from their body. Uh, and uh, therefore not kind of encouraging uh, the body motion that Justin has. So that's number one. Number two, let's take a look at that box. And why is that box important? Is that you can see from the moment that Justin starts his golf swing, his head starts getting lower. And I think that's a component of him basic, basically compressing into the ground or getting into a better balanced position because he's also going to be using some vertical forces in his golf swing. We won't really discuss that in this video here today. But when you're getting ready to create speed and power, getting lower into the ground, like Justin's head is doing here, and of course we see that wonderful sequence of getting the hiney lower and farther away. We see Justin's entire body kind of dropping down here, getting into even more of an athletic position as he's getting ready to strike the golf ball. These are all neat components that are taking place 
by the fact uh, of Justin really trying to maximize the rotational components into his golf swing. So, um, I hope this kind of is a neat little place for you guys to put some time and energy into your golf game. Maybe try and get a little closer to the golf ball. Try and get farther away from the golf ball on your downswing as you get ready to strike the golf ball. And I'm very confident that that's going to help you create more rotational speed and hopefully compress the golf ball and hit the golf ball farther and more consistently. Please feel free to leave some comments in the section, uh, com the comment section down below and hope to see you all out at the Pelican Hill Golf Academy in the not-so-distant future.